G'day folks, it's Rob here and in today's clip we're going to be running through how you can cycle a brand new aquaponic system just like this one behind me here. Just quickly, for you folks who are new to the channel, I do have a load of helpful aquaponic clips already posted. You can check them out by following a link in the description below, or there'll be a little button that pops up at the end. And if you want to be notified of future upcoming aquaponic clips, all you need to do is click on that subscribe button, and then pound the bell icon once it appears, and YouTube will hopefully send you notifications as soon as I upload them to the channel. Now the process of cycling is basically the creation of a biofilter within the aquaponic system to process the ammonia that is generated by the fish. And it's those media beds you can see behind me that create a perfect environment for the naturally occurring bacteria to set up shop so they can process that waste. So just a bit of a quick run through what's actually happening in the grow beds or biofilters. We have a couple of different types of bacteria. First off, we have some ammonia oxidizing bacteria, uh, predominantly nitrous ammonas, that will come in and convert the ammonia into nitrite. So nitrite is also toxic to the fish, but luckily enough, there's other oxidizing bacteria, nitrobacter and nitrospira, that will come in and convert that nitrite into plant available and fish friendly nitrate. So basically what we mean when we're saying cycling an aquaponic system is we're going through the steps to create a little nitrogen cycle within its own little ecosystem, that being the aquaponic system itself. So there's a couple of ways you can cycle your aquaponic system. More experienced growers and commercial folks will quite often use fish to cycle a brand new system, but they also know what sort of pH and water temperature and all the nitty gritty of what's involved in cycling with fish. The method that I recommend is called fishless cycling, and that's when we're adding an ammonia source into the fish tank to provide nutrients for the bacteria so they can come colonize and build up enough so they can process all the waste that will be generated by the fish as soon as we add them into the system. So it generally takes about three to six weeks to cycle an aquaponic system if your water temperature is between 24 and 30 degrees Celsius. For you folks in Fahrenheit, I think that's around about 75 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit. So you folks in cooler areas, you can still cycle your aquaponic system, but it may just take a little bit longer so to begin cycling, we're obviously going to need an ammonia source. There's a couple you can use. Uh, you folks who have access to pure ammonia, that's ammonia with no perfume or surfactants in it. Um, that is fine to use. Don't use it if it's got any detergents or you know anything like that in there. Uh, you can also use things like what I'm going to be using here, Charlie carp or other fish emulsions um, that will have some nitrogen in there, but they will also have an amount of ammonia as well. You can also buy purpose-made cycling preparations, namely ammonia chloride. They're put out by some companies. Uh, the one issue you will have with them though, is they're predominantly used for aquariums, which are a lot smaller than now a couple of thousand litre aquaponic systems. So it can get rather expensive buying these small little bottles, especially here in Australia, with our dodgy exchange rate. So along with the ammonia, you are going to need some testing equipment, so you know where the ammonia, nitrite and nitrate levels are. You can buy the um, tests individually, but I recommend you grab something like this. This is an all-in-one freshwater master test kit put out by API. It has your ammonia, your nitrite, your nitrate, and it also comes with a high and a low range pH test. So it's a bit of an all-in-one kit and is a lot cheaper buying them like this than individually as little test kits. So to start the actual cycling process, we're going to need a measuring cup. I think it's a good idea to have one of these. Also a marker pen. Uh, so we can write down the amount of additive we're adding into the system on the side of our box or on a card that we can pop inside the box. And we're also going to need our source ammonia. Now, when it comes to the source ammonia, I can't tell you exactly how much to add in because different varieties of ammonia will be in different concentrations within the product. Not only that, everyone runs a different size aquaponic system. So it's something that's a little bit difficult to just give you a, a blanket statement. This is how much you add. Best suggestion I can give you is adding in, say, a capful of the product, or maybe no more than 20 milliliters to begin with, adding that into your system, waiting 60 minutes or an hour and a half-ish, 90 minutes, and then doing your ammonia test. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to get the ammonia concentrations within the system 
up to no more than four parts per million or milligrams per litre. We'll use parts per million for the rest of this clip. Uh, the reason being is once we go over that four parts per million, uh, we can definitely slow down the rate that the bacteria will process the ammonia. Not only that, if we accidentally add too much, we can crash the whole colony, have to empty the water and start all over again. No one wants to do that. So start off small, mark down how much you're adding, and then test after an hour. So after an hour, you test the system and you find you've only got, say, one part per million of ammonia in the system. You can go back and look at what you jotted down on the side of your test kit and see how much you added. And from there, you can work out how much more needs to be added in to try and bring it up to, say, three parts per million. So from there, we're pretty much all just going to be playing a waiting game, testing for the ammonia and the nitrite every day. Once the ammonia oxidizing bacteria turn up, you'll start to see an increase in the nitrite. And then at that point, I'd probably suggest that you start testing for nitrate as well. One thing to keep an eye on though is your ammonia level. Once the ammonia drops down to around about 0.2 parts per million or 0.5 parts per million, you need to add in some more ammonia to keep the bacteria well fed. Otherwise, they're just going to starve and you're going to have to start the cycle all over again. Uh, so what you do is you go back to your box. If you've written the original amount of ammonia source you've popped in there on the side, add about three quarters of that back into the system. And again, once it drops down to that amount again, you do the same thing. Uh, you might find that you might be adding it um, every couple of days. And as the system matures, you might be adding it even more frequently than that. So from there, it's pretty much all just a waiting game. You're topping up the ammonia when the, it shows you need to on the test and just keeping an eye on those nitrite levels and you'll see that the nitrate is climbing as well. Also too, you will notice that the nitrite will peak and then it will slowly start to fall down to zero. And it's when it falls down to zero parts per million that you know that the system is pretty much well cycled. At that point in time as well, the ammonia will be sticking around zero parts per million. I'd probably just monitor it for another three or four days, make sure it all stays pretty much well flat on the testing levels. And then you can start organizing the fish to go into the system. So just quickly, there is another method that um, I do think is safe to use for beginners. And that's using the fish feed that you'll be feeding your fingerlings to begin with. Basically, inquire with the hatchery about um, the um, size feed the fingerlings will require and how much you will need to feed them to begin with. And what you can do is on a daily basis, add that amount of feed directly into either a grow bed or into your fish tank. And what will happen is after a couple of days, the protein in the feed will break down into ammonia and start to register. Uh, because you're adding a little bit in every day, it will break down progressively uh, over a period of time. So you won't get a massive shock of ammonia straight up, just a little bit. The bacteria will come, set up shop, start to process it, and hopefully within um, six to eight weeks, you'll have a cycled system. Now you still do need to do the test, so don't think you can get away with not doing your test. You still need to get out there and test your ammonia and your nitrite and your nitrate. Now for my system here, what I've decided to use is the Charlie carp. It's made out of a pest species, the European carp here. It's also got some seaweed added. So not only am I supplying ammonia into the system, I'm also adding a range of other nutrients that will hopefully pick up, where are we? The little plants behind me there. Hopefully pick up those warrigal greens and also feed some other plants that I'm looking at popping in through the week. Uh, just quickly speaking about plants, you can pretty much well add plants as soon as you start cycling your system, but please be aware that they're not going to do too well. Um, basically they're going to be lacking a lot of nutrients until you get the fish in there and the fish start consuming a fair amount of feed. Adding in some seaweed or kelp based products will help you folks who are just cycling with ammonia get some more nutrients into your plants as well. Just on another point, our system here will cycle very quickly because I am using media from our old aquaponics system and I know there's going to be a small amount of bacteria in there already so it won't take long for them to build up in numbers. Now, if you know someone who has a healthy aquaponic system, no issues with a sick fish or um, diseases in plants, you can pinch some of their media, pop it in your grow bed, and that will help to kickstart the cycling process because there'll be bacteria already on that media and hopefully it will help you cycle a lot faster. So just something to keep in mind. So as I mentioned at the start of the clip, I do have a fairly extensive library on DIY aquaponics. Uh, link in the description and a little button will pop up up the top there at the end of the clip. 
Also too, if you want to see the uh, future clips, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and pound on the bell icon once it appears, so YouTube can notify you when I do upload the clips to the channel. Before I go, I really do need to thank you all for coming along and supporting the channels by watching the clips, leaving comments and thumbing them up. Really do appreciate it. And thanks too to all those marvellous folks who are supporting us on the YouTube membership program and also the Farm Your Own Yard supporters page. Thank you very much, folks. And please do check out our super supporters. Links are down in the description down below. Pop on over to their websites and Facebook pages and see what they're all about. Really would appreciate that. I will pretty much well leave it there though. I do hope you're well and happy and your gardens and aquaponic systems are booming and I'll catch you next clip. Cheers folks, have a top one.